After my recent video on information and the camera sensor real estate dilemma, I received several messages and emails from persons asking why I did not comment on how sensor size and pixel size affects focal length. The question struck me as important enough that I should create a video to address it. And I'm going to give you a spoiler alert right now. Neither sensor size nor pixel size change through focal length in any way at all, not in the slightest. So if you want, you can skip the rest of this video. You already know the conclusion. But if you want to understand this topic more, let's dive in. The image above is my fairly poorly rendered version of a refractor telescope. The primary lens is on the left, the second lens is just to the right of the middle, and the focal plane where light comes into focus is at the sensor in the back. Now, focus length is a trait that is determined by the physical characteristics of the telescope. In the case of a refractor, it begins where the light passes through the first lens. The lens curves the light toward a second lens, which further curves the light and brings it into focus at the back of the telescope where the camera sensor is. And whether we are talking a refractor or a reflector telescope, the sensor will be located at the very end of the path of the light, at the focus plane ideally, where all the light comes together just right to bring whatever image we have our telescope pointed at in focus. Now there are many complex topics we could sidetrack into here, such as just what is meant by focal length and why do we say focal length rather than magnification since in astrophotography, we tend to think of focal length as relating to magnification. But I'm going to aim to keep this video very simple and just address the reality that neither sensor size nor pixel size have any effect on focal length. Let's zoom into the back of the telescope. Typically, telescopes are designed so that as much light as possible will reach the back of the telescope where we reach the focal plane. Many consumer telescopes designed for astrophotography are designed so that where the light reaches the focal plane, the focal plane is quite large enough that the area of the focal plane is able to encompass a full-size camera sensor, as shown here. The camera sensor is represented, relatively poorly I might add, by the bluish-purple vertical rectangle. And the yellow bars are my crude representation of light. If the light reaching the focal plane area is big enough to encompass that full-size sensor, then the entire image captured by the viewing side of the telescope is going to be shown on that sensor. On the other hand, if our camera has a smaller sensor, such as this camera's 1-inch sensor, which you can see is a little smaller in scale, the sensor will be too small to catch all of the lights reaching the focal plane. The excess lights will simply pass it by, reaching the back of the telescope or camera, and ultimately be unrecorded. Note that regardless of the size of the sensor on the back of the telescope where the focal plane is, the distance the light had to travel from the first lens to the focal plane remains the same. Only the sensor size changed, and the only thing that affects is how much of the light reaching the focal plane is recorded. Let's take a look at this from a straight-on view to help clarify it. Let's pretend we have a telescope with about a modest 250 millimeter focal length. And let's say the red circle represents the total light arriving at the back of the telescope, and the multicolored rectangle represents a full-size camera sensor and the image in the middle is the Andromeda Galaxy. Our full-size sensor can take up a great deal of the area of the focal plane where light hits the back of the scope, enough in this example to allow us to capture the entire Andromeda Galaxy in a single frame. Now, if I transferred this data to your computer screen, as far as your computer is concerned, it doesn't know nor care what the focal length of your telescope is, nor how much of your camera's sensor occupied the area of lights all the way at the end at the focal plane. If you tell it to display that image of the Andromeda Galaxy, it will simply fill up a viewing window with whatever data it has available, just like this. Now let's say instead that you switch to a different camera, one with a 1-inch sensor. That 1-inch sensor is going to occupy a much smaller region of the circle of light at the focal plane, like this. The size or magnification of the Andromeda Galaxy has not changed because the focal length of the telescope is fixed by the dimensions of the telescope. It is dependent upon the physical characteristics dictated by the telescope, but the sensor size has changed. Because it is smaller, it records a smaller portion of the Andromeda galaxy. So when you capture this image and decide to display it on your computer, as before, your computer will not know the focal length of the telescope nor the size of the sensor with which the image was recorded, nor will it care when you tell the computer to display the image with whatever software that you use, 
the computer will simply fill the viewing window with the image, like this. There is no additional focal length. The telescope is not magnifying the image anymore because you used a smaller sensor. Simply, the amount of the image that the camera sensor was able to record from the focal plane is expanded to fill the viewing window, which gives the illusion of a greater focal length. The physical focal length of the telescope is its true focal length. How much area of the focal plane is covered by the sensor where all the light falls is the crop factor, because it's as if the rest of the light is cropped out. Larger sensors, such as full-size sensors, will have smaller crop factors, and smaller sensors, such as one-inch sensors, will have larger crop factors. How much magnification this crop appears to create is the apparent focal length, and it should never be confused with the true focal length of the telescope. The crop factor that happens by using a smaller sensor does not directly cause image degradation like one would see with simply cropping a finished image. Because a smaller sensor is capturing within its area the same amount and quality of light that a larger sensor would capture with no other loss than the light missed by the crop factor. Mostly you could just say that if you are not using a sensor large enough to capture all the light reaching your telescope's focal plane, then you may be wasting some of the image capturing power of your telescope. Though that's subjective, and there are good reasons not to use a full-size sensor. Not only are smaller sensors much less expensive, but they are much easier to align, and most deep sky objects will not be big enough, even with a telescope with a very high focal length, to fill the entire space available on even a cropped camera sensor. And finally, pixel size has no effect whatsoever on true nor apparent focal length. However, the role of pixel size on sensors is complex, somewhat contentious, and a subject for another video. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any thoughts, observations, or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Now get out there and shoot the sky.